Okay. And so we started Raj Tents in 2004. It was a, a, a business venture that I'm sure a lot of um, the people taking your course would be able to glean something from. I was doing tent rentals in the UK and the scale of outdoor entertaining is obviously far more restricted just because of the climate. <laughs> the value added to events is very much due to the design aspect. How can you add the most value? What can you do that transforms a, an otherwise generic space, say a ballroom that people have had events back to back in for the last four months? How do you personalize that and turn it into the wedding environment that gives your client the most joy and the best memories? We do a lot of destination events and are really tooled up to be able to travel and um, provide installations um, pretty much anywhere. I would use the definition of a wedding where the bride, the groom and their guests have to travel a significant distance and they stay at the location in which they're getting married. Certainly beach weddings are just so much fun. So you have some real iconic environments that can be created. So whether it's in the Caribbean or in Mexico, certainly beach weddings stand out. Often where a wedding is in a, a ballroom, you, you have a very efficient space that is intended to facilitate um, large gatherings, weddings, celebrations, but there, there's a bit of an institutional overlay to all that. And to break through that with decor personalizes the space. So a trend that we see far more now is that destination weddings for same-sex couples are a first choice. There's less social convention that people feel obliged to conform to than in previous generations. So there's far more freedom. Taking your wedding away from your um, local environment into a new territory where you can express yourself freely is definitely one of the huge pluses. So it's a growing market segment and also it is one that um, not only is growing in terms of the percentage of people getting married that way but the amount of money being spent. Certainly the, the really high-end ones um, vendors are brought out from the United States. If you're hiring a band and flying them out to, um, to Barbados, then really they're going to be out two days either side of that, catching up on their sleep or whatever, and they, there's a big opportunity cost for them for bookings that they're going to be missing. Also, depending on the level of care that the couple and their guests require, having someone who really just represents the couple and is able to step in and sort out any problems or preferably step in before the problems occur, that, that's the service provided by, by the US-based um, wedding planner. And the wedding planner needs to really pull together diverse resources that aren't pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. They don't naturally fall into place. And you might, um, you know, you, you might need to pry them together because the end result is more creative. There's more scope to come up with uh, an individual solution that really addresses what the couple want. That's why there's a big migration from um, associated professions such as caterers or florists or interior designers who have a loyal client base who ask them to do more than they have been asked to do before. Of course, having a destination in the United States has all the convenience that the United States has to offer, all the familiarity, and yet you still get the novelty of a world-class destination. I'd say when 
a wedding planner is going on a, on a research field trip, it's, after all, it's a good way of having a tax write-off for what is also a change of scene and a vacation of sorts. And it's a good way of making sure that you use those times to, to your advantage.